Hello and welcome back to Humble and Brag. Today we're talking about how to release a YouTube video. Now that might sound kind of simple, all you have to do is press publish and it's out there in the big wide world, but there's a little bit more to it if you wanna give the video the best chance possible of being successful. So today I'm gonna to show you how to position the video, which channels to promote the video on, and the kind of tactics that you can use within those channels to ensure success. So let's dive into the mirror board and talk you through the process. So the first step is to decide on the positioning of the video, much like you'd decide on the positioning of a product. Now ideally this is done before the video is even produced, but we don't always have that luxury. Sometimes the video is uploaded and now we have to decide how best to distribute it. When positioning the video, you're basically asking yourself some really fundamental marketing questions. So let's go through and look at those questions. The first one is who's this video actually for? So who's the kind of ICP or who's the ideal uh, customer for this video? Who's the ideal viewer? Then you wanna ask yourself, why should they care about this video? So what kind of value are they actually receiving through this video? Next up, the proof points. So why should they listen to you? What kind of credibility do you have? Why should they trust you with this information? Fourth one, the superpowers. So this is one step down in the hierarchy from the value proposition from asking why should they care? What are the three main things that they're gonna take away? What are the three main values of this video? Now for this one that we're in, as I mentioned, uh, you're gonna learn how to position the video, you are gonna learn which channels to promote it on, and you are gonna learn some tactics for those channels. And this tends to be a good thing just to go with the power of three because it's nice and simple, and it's uh, easy to convey the value at the beginning of the video. And next up is the villain. Now the villain is basically the obstacle that people are trying to overcome. For this particular video, maybe it's something like uh, the videos they've released in the past on YouTube that have gained 10 or 11 views because they were just released into the YouTube abyss and suppressed by the algorithm. And we're trying to find ways of combating that and giving it that good early push. So maybe that's the villain in this video. Then the promised land, where do they wanna to get to? They wanna to get to a point where they have a system that's repeatable and replicable that they can use for every single YouTube release. That's what I'm gonna try and offer you. And then there's the competitor analysis. So this is basically looking at the landscape of different videos targeting the same kind of keywords or topics as your video. Looking at the kind of thumbnails, how could you stand out from those? Looking at the titles, how could you stand out from those? And looking at the content itself, if it's not already too late. And then the mega trends. So is there anything happening in society at the moment that you could relate your video to that might make it that bit more salient uh, than it other otherwise would be? So that gives you an overview of the kind of questions that you can ask yourself in order to position your video. Now remember, this isn't some kind of huge positioning project for your entire company. This is intended just as a few snappy questions to give you a really good input into your messaging that you can then use for all your marketing channels. And it might feel a little bit laborious at the beginning to get all this information together, but in reality, it'll probably take no more than 10, 15 minutes, and that's gonna save you a lot of time uh, when, it, when it comes to creating messaging and then copy for your different channels because you can create something that's centralized and you can either then feed off that if you're the sole creator or even better, you can pass it out amongst your team to those people that are responsible for the individual channels and it's gonna set them up for success as well. It's gonna be a lot more efficient. Anyway, enough talk about efficiency. Let's move on to the second step, which is the messaging itself. Now you can use any of the different questions and the answers to those questions that we discussed in the positioning phase, but generally I find it maps pretty well to take uh, the majority of that information from why should they care and pull that into the hook and then uh, take the what's great about this video. So those are the superpowers, that's the body. And then the CTA, what will the viewer achieve? Uh, thanks to this video, those are, that's, that's essentially the promised land. You take those three and you've already got some pretty developed copy and then you'll simply wanna add this click on the link to do do do, and that will be the uh, CTA. Let's pull out this post-it and uh, they should care because they are going to have YouTube videos which perform from day one, for example. So they perform as soon as they're released. Why is that potentially interesting? Uh, because people often talk about YouTube as a channel that takes a lot of time to gain traction once it's gained traction, it's super valuable. Maybe there's a way of fast forwarding that, of accelerating it so you can get traction that bit earlier. For a YouTube creator, that's probably gonna be, or for a business, that's gonna be quite interesting, hopefully. Then uh, what's great about this video, those are the superpowers. So you're gonna learn uh, how to position your video, and you're gonna learn uh, which channels to promote your video on and you're gonna learn uh, tactics uh, to implement 
on these channels. Just to go through that again. So you've got the hook, this is why should they care. Basically they should care because they're gonna learn how to ensure that their videos are performing from day one. Then we've got the body, this is what's great about this video. Um, what's great is that you're gonna learn how to position your video, you're gonna learn the channels on which to promote it, and you're gonna learn tactics for those specific channels as well. So you're gonna walk away with a lot of different ideas that you can implement. And then finally, uh, the CTA, what will the uh, viewer achieve thanks to this video? Um, they're gonna achieve a high performing YouTube channel for their business. That's the promised land. So after all of that, you have the structure of your messaging. Now I'm gonna dive down here and I basically have a library of hooks from some of the top creators that have been successful in videos. I'm gonna take one of those. So if you're an X, you should probably check out. That gives us the opening to the video. And you could have something like, if you're a YouTube creator and you're struggling to get traction on your videos, you should really check out this video and you'll learn how to uh, get your videos to perform from day one, something along those lines. Specifically, you'll learn how to position your videos, which, channel to, which channels to use to promote your videos, and uh, the tactics you can Im implement on those channels. And by the end of this video, you will have learned how to structure and how to create a high-performing YouTube channel. Something along those lines, okay, it's not perfectly smooth, but you can imagine with a little bit more time, not doing it off the cuff as I am now, you could create something pretty nice out of that. So now you have your positioning, you have your messaging. Let's look at the kind of channels that you want to distribute that messaging through. Now I've picked six channels and I've picked these six channels for two reasons. One is that most kind of startups, scale-ups, uh, tend to have these channels as marketing channels. And secondly, also because these channels are often pretty effective in terms of distributing and promoting uh, your new YouTube release. So the first one is YouTube itself. Then we have email community, LinkedIn, Instagram, and SEO. As you can see, I've added a little party emoji next to three of those channels, email, community, and SEO. And this is for one reason. So obviously you wanna get views on your YouTube video so that YouTube can collect a little bit of data to decide whether to push it in its algorithm or not. But you also want that view data to be of good quality. And what do I mean by that? You want a good watch duration on the video. And ideally you want a, a viewer to watch your video and then move on and watch different videos within your catalog or on your channel. And this basically gives YouTube the information that your session time, thanks to your videos, is good on YouTube and therefore your content should be pushed uh, relative to other people's content. And the reason that I highlight these three channels, I finally get to the point, is that email community and SEO tend to normally drive really good view times. Reason for this with SEO, if you imagine your YouTube video is embedded within a blog post, then it's very much in the context of similar kinds of information, gives you the opportunity to talk a little bit and prime the viewer about what the video is about, and you'll tend to see as a consequence very good watch times. It's in a kind of native environment for your video, so to speak. Then with email and community, it's fairly similar. You have your most engaged and most kind of committed audience in those channels. So typically someone that signed up for your email, whether it's a newsletter or a free course or something like that, is pretty engaged and pretty knowledgeable about what your company offers and is probably pretty engaged in the topic that your uh, company talks about as well. And community, much for the same reason. So you have obviously a lot of activity, probably a closer uh, emotional connection with these people that are uh, more often interchanging with you. Then with LinkedIn and Instagram, great ways to get those views, but typically you'll see lower watch times on your videos with those social platforms as a source. Still a good way to make those channels in turn feel a little bit more dynamic and interesting and also to get some uh, more traffic on the videos. YouTube itself actually kind of falls between the two. So you'll see subscribers returning and maybe having a good watch time, but often when you're promoting it on community tabs um, and when you have people kind of clicking through from their notification on their phone, whatever it might be, it might not actually be the ideal time for them to watch that video, and you see that in the watch times, funnily enough, when you first release a video. Okay, so now we know how to position the video, we've got some good messaging, we've got the channels through which we can distribute this messaging. We're now moving to the final step, and we're gonna look at some specific tactics for those channels. Now, remember, there's a lot of tactics here. You don't have to implement all these tactics at the same time. All I'd like is that you kind of pick and choose. If there's an idea you like, then maybe test that out next time. 
And then over time, you can kind of build out a system that can be relatively complex, but because it's replicable, because you do it each time you release, it kind of becomes sim simple with repetition. You become expert with repetition, right? So first of all, with YouTube, then obviously you need to make sure that your description copy, your title, everything is sufficiently SEO optimized. Like maybe you're taking the title more in the direction of something that's kind of clicky and snappy. That's okay, but you definitely want to make sure that your description is, is pretty well SEO optimized for the keywords that you're, uh, that you're targeting, and also that the chapter names are also well SEO optimized. And why do I say that? If we just uh, type in something here, like what is UX design, and uh, we see some video results pretty prominent here. Funnily enough, all three videos made by my co-founder, Callum, who's currently sitting behind the, the camera, Pretty impressive results here. Same thing as if you do the search through incognito, by the way. And why do I say that it's super important to optimize the chapters? Because if you drop down, click the drop down here, you'll see all these title names. And this is obviously giving YouTube uh, and Google, um, basically the same company, a lot of information about the content of the video from the get-go. Uh, and that's gonna help your results, both within Google search, within the video tab. If we look in here, you're gonna see the same videos again. Um, and it's also going to help you on YouTube as well. It helps both in terms of SEO, but also in terms of click-through rate, you'll notice that the results themselves, just like they are in here on Google, are that much richer and more visually appealing because there's more information within the result. So yes, that's the first thing that you should be looking at. Next up, uh, shorts. So um, when you shoot the video or after you've shot the video, ideally before, because you want to kind of fashion those shorts specifically for the format, then it's a good idea just to release a few around the time of the video or just before, just to have that kind of teaser effect about the content that's soon to come out. You can also use the community tab in YouTube uh, to post about the release of the video. That's also gonna drive some traffic primar primarily on mobile. You see that the community tab has quite a lot of prominence uh, within that YouTube experience. Then also on all the existing videos you have, you can use the traffic on those videos in different ways to drive traffic to your new video. And this is a little bit time consuming, but absolutely worthwhile. You can implement end screens on your videos. You can do it also in an automated way that every time you release a new video is promoted from the end screens. And you can also link from pinned comments from the description of existing YouTube videos that have got a good number of views to drive traffic to the new video. And if you like, and if you have the budget, you can also put some money behind the videos to drive up the number of views. And while that might not necessarily drive good watch times, it's gonna drive up the views, which in itself is a sign for people browsing around YouTube of the video's credibility. So let's move on to LinkedIn. For LinkedIn, it's not so much about just posting the video um, because the LinkedIn algorithm tends to suppress any external links. You really wanna break it up into valuable content that's purpose specifically for LinkedIn. So what's working particularly well there are one pages at the moment and carousels. So these are kind of PDF uploads that contain a lot of information. And then just within the copy of the post, you can say, hey, if you're interested in this topic, check out the YouTube channel for the video. You can break it into simple long form text uh, without any kind of media. Or alternatively, you can develop micro content for LinkedIn as well. So this is basically uh, taking a uh, software like Descript or VDIO or something like that, just cutting it into simple, social appropriate uh, content. What do I mean by that? I have a few examples. So this is something that I did a couple of days ago on the previous uh, YouTube video. And this is really just simply... Yeah, a brag, we really see YouTube as a... Yeah. Subtitling, uh, having a few of those social components in, not going to end on that particular still as that's not very becoming. Um, and yeah, and then you create a short that's a slightly different format, obviously a little bit quicker, a little bit snappier, et cetera, et cetera. Also suitable for someone that's watching on silent. Uh, or alternatively, you have these kinds of things. So you have your carousels, you can create those pretty much in any design software or even in presentation software. So here we have carousels in, uh, I've forgotten the name of this now. Keynote, Keynote thank you. <laughs> or Google Slides, which I do remember the name of. Um, but I also done it in Miro, all sorts. Uh, currently prefer Google Slides because it's just a little bit quicker. Yes, so that's uh, a few examples of what it could look like on LinkedIn. Then we come to Instagram. Carousels, also possible there. Again, you can basically use the same content that you've used for uh, LinkedIn. Micro content, kind of similar, maybe use the vertical format uh, rather than any kind of square format. 
and then stories. And here, stories, I think, from me, has always been the most interesting way of promoting new content, especially if you can use external links within your Instagram content. Because so on the one hand, you're driving traffic directly to that content. Yes, the watch times might not be great. But on the flip side, then it also gives your Instagram just this sense of dynamism that things are always happening within your company. There's new content out, this thing's happening, that thing's happening. Go and watch this video over here, go and check out this bit of content over there. And yeah, that feeling of a dynamic company, if you kind of think of the extremes of kind of Gary Vee and stuff, then a lot of his attraction, I think, is because you have this sense that stuff is always happening around him and you kind of want to be part of that. And that simple uh, atmosphere of activity is, is in itself uh, quite inherently good and interesting and attractive. Anyway, SEO, talking about inherently good and interesting and attractive, perfect topic. So SEO, you can obviously embed your videos within blogs, for example. Often I like a good strategy when you're first kicking off your YouTube channel is really to use the blog, which has probably existed for a bit longer, as inspiration. Take those top performing articles, turn them into entertaining and educational videos. Take that video and put it back in the blog you'll tend to see an improvement in the performance of the blog because of longer session durations, for example. Um, and you'll see the knock-on effect of views coming directly to your video as well. And as I said at the top of this video, those views will generally be good, good data for the YouTube algorithm and good for your channel because they'll have a good watch duration. And so just embedding your videos, super important. Do it as soon as the YouTube video is released. Maybe even do it just before if you have the video uh, unlisted, for example. So the next two things are things that we've just started enacting at Humble and Brag. The first one is taking the transcript from these videos with a tool like Descript that can do it uh, pretty much immediately off the back of an upload. Take that and upload it into a custom GPT, either with ChatGPT or with a tool like Journalist AI, and then use that as the source information for an article. And then also encourage it to, for example, take quotes from the speaker, so from me in this case, just to give the article a more kind of journalistic, more interesting, more personalized uh, kind of feel to it. So it's not too obviously AI generated and ideally not obviously at all AI generated. But I think video transcripts could potentially uh, be a really, really good source of actually quite well-produced AI content. And then similarly to take stills of the video itself, like you can get really nice, almost photographic quality stills from these uh, um, high production value videos. And then also when we're using kind of props like uh, the mirror board, then there's a lot of informational imagery that really helps blogs perform well. Um, if we go back to this example of what is UX design, you see all the videos kind of really prominent within the search results. If you go to images, then you'll see this top line is all what I would call informational imagery. So basically infographics or something kind of like an infographic but basically images that really communicate a lot of information rather than something like this, which is just a picture of people. So you wanna populate your blog posts with that and the video can actually be a source of those as well, potentially. Then next up is community. You have two communities off the top of my head that you should use and the first one often gets forgotten. The first one is your team, your employees, because they're gonna engage with the video, partly because it's obviously of interest to them purely as a, um, an asset from the company. But if you just gently nudge them to interact and leave a comment, etc., then potentially you've got 10, 20, 100, 200 uh, interactions already. And that's actually gonna have a pretty positive effect on the performance of the video, especially if you're just starting out with your YouTube channel. That's not insignificant. The same with any social post, to be honest. A LinkedIn post, getting 10, 20 likes is very different to getting 200 likes and you'll get a lot more reach if you have that employee interaction. So no bad thing. And the other one is the kind of external community. So if I switch over here, we have the Humble and Brag community. The Humble and Brag community is called Humbleweed. And here we have a whole community of people talking about YouTube, strategies for YouTube, how to be successful on YouTube. And every day there's a ton of messages. We try and talk to everyone, try and answer questions from everyone. And they're obviously pretty engaged. If we post a video that is of value, like hopefully this one, in fact, the idea for this video came from this community. So. Uh, it wouldn't be very surprising if you get a lot of watches and fantastic watch time and immediate feedback on the video as well. So a really, really important and valuable tool there. And then finally, we come to email. So email for me is a little bit like the old fashioned community. Everything happens a little bit slower. Uh, there's a little bit more one way, but you have some of the same advantages. So you can uh, send out this uh, content with a simple email. Um, you can also add it to the signature, for example, of all the emails that are going out just to get that kind of those passive views, so to speak. 
And the one thing that you should never forget, because I think this is massively, massively valuable, is to integrate the video into your existing workflows. So if you have marketing workflows, automated workflows, to use that content as quickly as possible to get it in there and then has a life of its own over the next years um, and will be constantly trafficked with, uh, with viewers. And uh, sales sequences. So after a sales call, for example, this is the kind of content ideally that you can send out and is gonna convince people of your credibility and of your expertise within a particular area. So get it into those sequences, get it into those workflows, um, and obviously try and uh, use the client kind of questions, queries, objections, etc., as ideas for your videos as well. Just like, again, this one is trying to answer this client question of how best to launch your YouTube video. Yes, so now that brings us pretty much to the end of the video. We have the positioning, how to position your video, how that filters into the messaging for your video, how that then filters into your channel mix, the kind of channels that you could or should be using, and the kind of tactics that you can use within those channels as well. Like I said, might be a little bit daunting at the beginning, build a process out of it, find what works for you, repeat it, repeat it, repeat it, optimize it, iterate it, or iterate on it, and um, yeah in a fairly short space of time, I imagine you'll have those videos that are really gaining traction from day one. And that's how you have a release that is surrounded by lots of party emoji. That brings us to the end of the video. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, if you have any channels that you'd like to suggest, if there's anything I missed, then drop it in the comments below. If you have any video topics that you would like us to make, let us know, join our community, say hello, all those things. If you like this content, you might want to check out this video, which is all about how to develop a full funnel strategy for your YouTube channel and for your business. Uh, and that's just about it. Thank you. See you next time.